Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patrons, Miguel DC and Cole P. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. I'm curious, what did you guys think about this clip? Impressive or unnecessary? According to some new lobbyist documents, we get some more color on what Tesla might be planning specifically in Ontario when it comes to expansion. Tesla is seeking opportunities for industrial facility mineral extraction in Ontario. And not just that, but they're also working on processing project permitting reforms, which has been one of the limiting factors while working with the government to identify incentives to make Ontario even more attractive. You may recall VW just announced around a $7 billion investment into Ontario for a battery facility. Ontario quickly becoming an EV and materials hub with $25 billion in auto and EV investments in just the past two and a half years. We're not going to revisit them because we've talked about them in the past, but in just the last six months, there have been 13 different meetings between Tesla lobbyists and federal government officials. So whether we get a full on Giga Ontario or just some mineral processing, maybe some cell production is still TBD, but there's definitely still something in the works. Yesterday, we talked about Tesla's captive financing. Now, this may not be that exactly. They could just be working with third-party providers. Either way, in Spain, they're now offering a 10-year financing term. This example was 10 years at 4% with FSD included. Ordinarily, I would say try to avoid these super long terms, but when it comes to Tesla, if FSD hits, it could be an appreciating asset. Who knows? Yes, Tesla has raised prices in some markets, including the US, but on average, it's about $250. Here you have the updated pricing and in the United States, it was just for the Model 3 and Y, no changes to the Model S and X. If you wanna argue Tesla did this to try to encourage people to buy now, you can be my guest. I'm just going to stick with what Tesla just told us on the Q1 call when they were asked about pricing. Elon said every day we get real time daily updates of how many cars are being produced and how many are being ordered. Elon said Tesla's data is real time. It does not have latency like legacy OEMs dealing with dealers. And they just ask, what does it take to achieve a clearing price for our vehicle production? Every single day, seven days a week, they look at this data and adjust course as needed. I think some of the platform, what we built, that's another very proud moment to see what the way we built it is, we were able to show the feedback coming from customers. Um, to the, to the right people in the right departments instantly, almost instantly. So if there are ways to, they could see that never existed in the automotive world before Tesla. It's honestly a very cool story about how Tesla has all of this real time data to use. And I actually told that story about two years ago in this video, so it'll be below in case you missed it. You may have seen this famous tennis star Nick Kyrgios had his Model X stolen, but luckily he was able to use the app and actually mobily slow the car down to help the cops actually find it using that real time GPS data. So hopefully this news spreads and deters other criminals from stealing Teslas. Exhibit A, where having a connected vehicle can really come in handy. We have Timmy on Twitter, who Elon has been interacting with, saying FSD beta could be possible in Europe at the earliest by January 2024, and now at the latest by the summer of 2024, when previously the expectation was sometime into 2025, sharing these documents. Before I show them to you, you'll need to know what DCAS stands for, Driver Control Assistance System. This is basically the regulation to focus on for FSD beta being allowed in a more extensive capacity in Europe. Going through the documents Timmy shared, the government bodies are now suggesting to prioritize the submission of the DCAS regulation this year. The regulation is being broken up into two buckets, the hands-on and hands-off. For the hands-on phase one, they now have a new submission mission date for some of these regulations for June 2023, and they say pre-deployment testing of systems upon submission. I won't dive into the weeds because a lot can change in the next six months, but if things go well, it sounds like now things have been expedited so we could see FSD beta again in a more extended capacity about a year sooner than we were previously expecting. And yes, these regulations actually should have been done back in 2021, but some of the powers that be don't want to see change happen. How about this? Span, the company I told you guys about that was founded by the former head of product at Tesla, who was actually responsible for the original rollout of the Tesla Powerball, is continuing to make waves and continuing to find ways to make the Tesla Powerball even better. 
Did you guys see this news? Span just announced a Series B2 fundraise of $96 million, bringing their total funding now to $231 million. Span also continues to announce new partnerships with companies like Kenmore and Sunrun. They just said they're also developing a state-of-the-art R&D facility in San Francisco for product testing in a microgrid environment that can emulate multiple on- and off-grid scenarios. And recently, Span was recognized by Forbes as one of the top five best startup employers in the United States. Span is an award-winning smart home panel that was recently announced in a White House press release for their contributions to the EV movement. Span is the sponsor of this video, but many of you guys pointed out the great work that Span is doing the last time I mentioned them, and for good reason. Span can extend the average battery backup power time during an outage by 40%, and as Matt Farrell has pointed out, it fixed his Tesla Powerwall. So if your Powerwall is at 50% or lower, it can immediately shut off circuits you play in the non-essential group. You can also move circuits from group to group easily and it gives updated estimates of remaining battery power based on your changes. You can track and monitor each individual circuit, setting priority for each, and Span gives you awesome insight into your energy use to help you save money and energy. So whether you're upgrading a traditional panel or planning to get solar in a home battery, this should be a no brainer to at least consider. So if you'd like to learn more about the Span panel or their new Span Drive EV home charger, you can use the link below or head to span.io and tell them Electrified sent you. Thanks to Span and thanks to all of you for supporting the channel. Now Farley and Ford just seem confused because after Farley called out Elon for lowering prices and commoditizing their vehicles, well, now Ford's doing the same thing. Different variants of the Mach-E have just been dropped in price between three and $4,000. A very clear indication that for this vehicle to compete with the Model Y, they have to drop the prices. The only reason they would do this is because they have to. We already know they're losing money on the Model E division. Ford also announced all standard range models will now be powered by lithium iron phosphate, LFP. With those standard range packs, they're now targeting an EPA range of 250 miles for the rear wheel drive and 226 for the AWD. And remember, as of now, the Mach-E only qualifies for half of the federal tax credit. Ford added their plant upgrades at their Mexican facility where they make the Mach-E has been finished and that would support a production ramp up in the second half of this year. It's one of those things, the media just blows up Tesla for lowering prices, laser focusing on margin, which in the long run doesn't mean that much when the real story is what Tesla's price cuts mean for everybody else. Case in point, Exhibit A. All of these other companies that are really trying to survive that are going to have to lower prices to try to compete with the Tesla vehicles. Today at 4.05 p.m. Eastern Time, Ford will release its financial earnings for Q1 and the conference call will follow at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Here's a storyline we've been talking about now for months and more people are waking up to what's going on. You may recall Carlos Tavares, the CEO of Stellantis, warned that Europe needs a strategy to compete with China's lower prices. European made electric cars cost 40% more than the Chinese models, adding it's a very bleak scenario. In an odd way, it's almost a blessing in disguise for the legacy OEMs in the United States to not have to deal with this Chinese competition right now because BYD is still in the process of deciding if it's going to sell passenger cars to Americans, mainly due to political tensions. If you take just a second to think about what the US auto market would look like if these very affordable BYD EVs were coming to the United States, it would be a huge game changer and a massive obstacle to overcome for legacy OEMs. And going back to just the Q4 call, even the higher ups at Tesla have said multiple times, the Chinese are scary, we always say that. Speaking of Chinese EV sales, the early numbers for April are apparently better than expected. I'm just going to share the month over month numbers. BYD up 1.6%. Liado up 23%. NEO not so great, down 36%. And Xpeng up 1.1%. We'll get Tesla's numbers here in the next few days. I told you before, I'll keep saying it all year because I think it's one of the biggest storylines in the auto industry. Watching these Chinese brands, how they sell in the European market has major implications for their expansions globally over the next decade. Don't forget, check out Span linked below. They have an awesome team. I've talked to them many times. Even if you just want to learn a little bit more about the product, they'd be happy to talk to you. You can find me on Twitter at DylanLumis22. Hope you have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.